We have video recording. We are recording audio. Everything is confirmed. And it begins in three, two, one. Scheiße. And the equivalent for Scheiße is Kacke. I don't drink, you dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> The Morning Stream, The Beast with a Million Eyes. Why, just last week I had my entire car millionized, and it smells great. Good morning, and welcome to TMS. It's The Morning Stream for Wednesday, October 11th, 2023. I'm Scott Johnson. That's Brian Ibbett. Good morning. Hello. Good, Good morning. morning. One Earth Day later, we're back. Did everyone mark their watches and check the time? <laughs> uh, good, good day, everyone. It's nice to see you. Welcome to Hump Day. It's yeah. Wednesday. We got mid midweek uh, business to deal with today. Midweek madness. Yeah, as they as they never call it. Some of this is madness. Like I got this. Yeah. Uh, somebody notified me on another forum that somebody had posted something in the TMS Discord yesterday, mm-hmm. and this came from <laughs> Daniel. Uh, Daniel BLN is his uh, his username. Okay. And um, I didn't know this. I'm even a subscriber and I wasn't informed. I don't know if they just didn't send me emails or whatever, but 11labs.io, which is like a big audio AI thing. Um, it's where I get the, the the weird screaming Mario fake Fletcher voice on right, film right. sack and all that. <laughs> um, they added something oh, called... Tara! <laughs> <laughs> they added something on here called um, dub, or some kind of dub, 11labs audio dub or something. And the, mm-hmm. And the goal is here... You, you can post a YouTube link or upload a video, whatever, however you want to get it into its hands. But let's say it's a YouTube link of anything, and it will convert the people talking into not only another language, so it'll dub in another language, but it will dub it in their voice. Right. And they'll also uh, be, it'll have full accents, regional accents, all the stuff that you would have depending on where you, where, where, what language you're pulling from, which made me think movies are about to get real interesting because if oh, you yeah. can, if you can do this and match the actual voices, but it sounds like he's a German guy or he's a yeah. Japanese guy or whatever, yeah. then why would you hire? I mean, this sucks for people that work. <laughs> it really does. It completely sucks for people who do all those all those people that it lists uh, after the regular credits on Disney Plus when you're done watching an episode of Loki. All those extra people that it lists there that do the voices. Yeah, it's a lot, right? Localization's like yeah. a big deal, yeah. and you have huge, huge, you know, groups of people who do this stuff. But all of that aside, the tech is kind of impressive, and so. What Daniel did was push us up, put one of our TMS videos, specifically yesterday's discussion about Al Michaels never <laughs> eating a vegetable, yeah. um, and he put it up on this thing and then pooped out the output, and it poops out video with this new audio track. Yeah. And I just thought I would share some of what me, me and Brian would sound like if we spoke German. Now, some of you German speakers out there, I would love to hear from you about if this all sounds accurate, does it make sense? Like I'm hearing, I'm hearing from some people on the Discord that the accents are dead on, but that some of the wording is nonsense. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't, but I don't know how to know. I don't, I'm not, I don't know German. I know yeah, Scheisse. Yeah. I know, I know. Uh, mein Leben when I get shot. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. That's what I got. Right. Yeah. So anyway, here it is. This is Brian and I yesterday. You'll hear out the name Al Michaels come up uh, in English, which is kind of funny. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah, because there's no translation, I guess, it's like, directly. It's like you're Captain Kirk in uh, 99 Luft Balloons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. So here it is. Enjoy. And Michaels. Schwarte Porter. And Michaels. Um, yeah. That's a good job, oder? You bring in. Das tut er. Ich kenne seine Stimme und ich weiß, wenn ich ein Bild von Maitreya sehe, ist das All Michaels. Aber ich könnte Ihnen nicht sagen, wie seine Stimme klingt. Ich könnte Ihnen nicht sagen, wie er. Ich kann Ihnen mir total gut vorstellen, weil Sie das immer gemacht haben. Schneiden Sie zur Kamera im Stand mit ihm und John Madden mit Ihren Headsets auf. Und so sehe ich ihn immer in diesem Kontext. Er steht immer da und spricht in ein Mikrofon über einen wirklich wichtigen Teil des Spiels. Aber der Typ hat, wissen Sie, viele Super Bowls gemacht und gilt als einer der großen Sportreporter aller Zeiten. Nun, er setzte sich zu einem Interview oder für ein Interview mit Chris Wallace hin. Und Chris Wallace, ehemals von Fox, jetzt von CNN, wie sein Vater. Ziemlich guter Interviewer. Ähm, 
Wie hieß sein Vater? Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace. Also dachte ich, oh, das klingt super. Das klingt interessant. Ich werde mich hinsetzen. That's so weird. It's really funny. Like the, um, uh, obviously the drop-in names. Mike Wallace. Ja, yeah. Mike Wallace. Ja. Yeah. Um, John Madden. But, uh, Mike Wallace. Yeah. Mike Wallace. Um, my voice, like, I'm a lot drier. My, my voice than, than my English speaking voice. You know what I love about yours though? Uh, they, they get this breathe in thing so dead right. Like, yeah. Here, let me play that part one more time. Hey, Michaels, Sport Reporter. Das ist gute Arbeit, oder? Wir bringen ihn. Das, das tut er. Ich kenne seine Stimme und ich weiß, wenn ich ein Bild von Matreya. Like, like, yeah, yeah, like, right there, that, like, like taking a breath before I say something. Like, it doesn't. That's weird. It doesn't uh, take that out. What's, here's what's funny. When I played this yesterday, Because Tanner texted me and says, have you heard this? And put a link right to it. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Um, at first, because I didn't read any of the context around it. Yeah. I thought it was Simlish. I didn't oh. think it was German. I thought we were just speaking. Like, it wasn't until about <laughs> 10, 15 seconds in that I realized it wasn't just gibberish. Like, the beginning, you even say something like blah, 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 or something like that. Yeah. Like, it doesn't, it sounds like it's. It does sound like nonsense. Yeah. You remember when we we played that audio of what English sounds like to someone who doesn't understand English? Yeah. And yeah. how it's like all these weird weird sounds just yeah, jumbled together. Yeah, we played some of that here, I think, didn't we? Yeah, we yeah. did. We totally did. I think we That's did. That's what it sounded like to me. Like, oh, okay, this is this is like English to somebody who hasn't heard English and I'm like, "Oh, wait, no. I'm hearing German um phonics." Uh I think it's also the Crazy. speed at which it was coming at me was yeah. throwing me because because we sound very fluent, right? Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. you sound fluent, there's speed to fluency. People yes. haul ass through yes. their words and stuff. Right. Whereas whereas if it was me actually trying to read German, I'd be like, like in Dorf, Der Flerg and Herg and, you know, doing the slow way. Right. But in this case, it's like zip zap zip zap and we're just in it. So you're right. It's it just does, super fast. It sounds like nonsense. Did you... Uh, Did you capture some of the audio when they took our German and then put it back into English? Shit! What? This is a new. This is news to me. Hold on. <laughs> Did this really happen? Yes. Do you want a link? Uh, you a link? I think it, is it the TMS chatter thing or where? 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 It's in the same place. Yeah. It, if you go into the TMS chatter and just scroll up to the. <laughs> Basically, the first video after the GIF of uh, the guy with one tooth in his mouth laughing. Oh, here it is. Took that bit and put it back in English. Here it is. Okay. Holy shit. I'm so excited. All right. Here we go, everybody. This is a great experiment. Are they familiar with uh, Mr. Michael's sports reporter? Uh, Mr. Michael's he, all right. Travel good job, right? We like He him. does. It was, I know his a, voice, and I know when I see a picture of Matreya. Is that all Michael's? But I couldn't tell you what his voice sounds like. Why are you talking that way? Isn't that hilarious? Why? I sound, I sound like... The dude who says, are you prepared? <laughs> why is it doing that to your voice? I don't know. I don't know why it makes me English. Uh, and, and uh, God, it's so funny. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Hold, I got to hear more. Hold on. I couldn't tell you what he looks like. I can imagine like. him very well because they always did that. Cut to the camera, standing with him and John Madden with their headsets on. That's how I always see him. It's so deliberate now. It's so like... Yeah, it really is. You it's, see it's... them standing in the thing with those headsets on. <laughs> it's almost like it, when somebody's reading a... Uh, uh, a, a uh, um, uh, geez, Louise. Transcript of our yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah. As like, opposed to saying, you know. Yeah, like it was to yeah basically, yeah. I guess that is what it's doing. And this is like an old yeah. trick you could do with Google Translate and stuff. You could go back sure. and forth. But that was always text. It was like... No, it's like you would you would change a, a song title or a product jingle, you know, from English to Chinese and then back to English to see if people could recognize it, identify the jingle or identify the song title or whatever. Right. But uh, hearing in audio and then hearing our voices that have been a, a, a twice fried AI. <laughs> it is like refried beans of, of AI yeah, audio. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I got to hear you again. Mr. Michael's he, all right. Travel good job, right? We like He him. does. It was, I know his a, voice, and I know when I see a picture of Matreya. Is that all Michael's? But I couldn't tell you what his <laughs> It's so weird. <laughs> It's so weird. Oh, my gosh. That's uh, weird. Uh, Phil's, I'm having uncanny, <laughs> an uncanny valleyism, like hardcore right now. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. All right. Well, that made it even better. That's fantastic. Oh, for sure. Here's just yes. a taste of what Dunaway sounds like. He sounds like... Uh, Somebody, somebody said the vibe they were getting was um, uh, the guy from the professional uh, 
uh, Luke uh, no, Jean Reno. Jean Reno. Jean mm-hmm. Reno. Here's what he sounds like on Play Retro. J'ai failli ouvrir Minecraft l'autre soir. That's me. Oh ouais, Minecraft est génial en VR tant que tu fais semblant de regarder sur un autre écran dire, à l'intérieur de la VR. Même pas en VR, juste en général, j'ai oh, une ouais, ouais. Euh, oh, mon comme Dieu. juste comme ça, tu sais quoi, j'ai j'ai vite Minecraft arbres. comme j'ai vite <rire> World of Warcraft. <rire> Minecraft. Minecraft. And World of Warcraft. <laughs> so good, man. Uh, this is my favorite new thing. Funny. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. thanks, Daniel, for making us aware. Of, this is, uh, this is uh, you, you guys are using AI for, for good, by the way. Yeah. Well done. It you, feels you like it. A, I'm sure yes. there's some dark corner here somewhere that we could oh, go down. But uh, It's absolutely, yeah. you know, the, the lost jobs that are going to be happening for people who do um, language translation dubs but yeah for sure shit oh look yeah. at this uh okay so I'm, i just went to see what's up here so you got create a dub you can do source language target language and then you can upload a file or a link from youtube tiktok twitter vimeo or other url i guess it can be anything uh hmm. oh but they'll only do two two thousand characters per minute of audio oh no 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 i understand okay i see so it could be the whole video I'm not saying this is the future of translation or of uh, transcription, but I think it might be. Yeah, yeah. you know, like At why wouldn't one step on the uh, right? Yeah, one why wouldn't you do this? It, for sure, it just seems like it takes so much out of the pro- if it's accurate enough, if it's good course, enough, yeah. you know, it's right. already I mean, a our, problem. Al Michaels discussion is pretty close to what we were saying about Al Michaels. Yeah. So yeah, and you know. I can't wait to play this. So uh, Mrs. Crazy Neighbor. Um, uh, her major in college was uh, German, so she speaks it very fluently. So I can't wait to play this for her to see. I'm not even going to tell her it's AI. I said, oh, Scott and I decided to try our hand at uh, speaking uh, in German. Oh, you should totally uh, do that. Absolutely. Yeah. I have yeah. a really clean version of that file if you want to give it to her that Ooh, way. Oh, I do. Yeah, that'd be great. Because that way yeah. you don't show her video and it looks fake. You know what I mean? Like yeah. You just hear yeah. the audio. Uh, I'll, I'll put that in our Discord. I love it. Cool. That's great. Let's mm-hmm. get her opinion. Let's hit her. Let's hear from all the Germans. We know we have listeners over there. I see all your numbers. All the Z Germans. Yeah, Z. <laughs> sorry, Z Germans, or as the British <laughs> like to say, Z Germans. All right. Right. Yeah. There we go. Uh, and let us know. That'd be that'd be great. All right. Uh, I got to talk about a thing that just weirded me out. Okay. So uh, let's do that. Um, all right. So these exact these identical twins. Um, this is not the first time I've heard of this, but identical twins. Mary. Other identical twins, all right. Okay. So you got a you got a pair of sisters who are mm-hmm. ident- genetically identical, not fraternal, identical twins. Important part of this, yeah. and they date separately, but date this this boy, this guy who is also an identical twin, and his identical brother is dating the other sister. So we have a direct identical twins dating identical twins all right yes a straight one to one correlation one to one correlation they then have <laughs> they then each have a, a, a little boy each well, they get married okay. okay and they both have a little boy each now mm-hmm. genetically or let's say it this way legally those kids are cousins but genetically mm-hmm. they're siblings they're brothers right that blew my yeah. mind yesterday. That is wild, yeah. Because if you, because no it's it's not like a it's not a full dichotomy, you know, where it's like wow, how, like one of some like math problems that don't that there's no answer to or things like that. I don't mean like that, but this feels like close to that, where it's like you're your cousins, yes, but you but but it but by the DNA you are literally brothers because they are these right. are di- because of the identical right identical twin mothers identical twin fathers that was so weird it made me think that, that, is, that I was uh, if I was a pothead I would have had the best night of my life thinking about this <laughs> you know yeah but, but uh, you would have had uh, a whiteboard with a bunch of lines drawn and uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, circles and triangles and uh, like you know figuring all out yeah yeah so they so so I guess what I'm saying is what are the implications maybe there are none but it's like all right what if what if the what if one set of parents got lost uh, you know took uh, took a trip somewhere and was just, they were lost at sea I don't know <clears throat> they never recover the ship or the bodies or anything. They don't know where they are. They just disappear. Sure, sure. Does the other couple 
adopt this kid, but do they even need to? Because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think, I think they'd still technically legally need to adopt the kid. The kid still is the is the uh, the child of the. So they uh, would have to go the through that. You think child but, would still be yes? Okay, they still legally have to go through the proceedings to adopt, but uh, right. But wouldn't wouldn't um, but, you if you were in charge of that process? Wouldn't you feel a, a great sense of redundancy that day? Like you'd be like, "This is a waste of everyone's time." <laughs> they're literally related. Like they're they're why yeah. are we do, why are we going through this? You know what I mean? Like I, I I mean I think I think that from the outside maybe, but I think you know they're living in separate houses. I'm assuming they're living in separate houses. I'm assuming they're you know they're they're raising yeah. they're not raising these children standing shoulder to shoulder doing exactly the same thing and so it's like oh we've had all the same experiences so it's almost like your child is our son and our <laughs> child is your son it's right. like you know there's still you know they're still separated by walls and doors and maybe uh blocks or miles or even just a few feet i don't know if they found identical houses on the same <laughs> street next to each other right they live in a duplex as far as i know uh, there's none uh, of that i think they 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 yeah. live in the same state but they're not like you know in the same duplex or anything like that yeah yeah that'd but, be amazing uh, though if you were on one side of a duplex uh that is the exact same like in front of duplexes <laughs> just a mirror image yeah. of the uh the place that they start i love that yeah okay so here's <laughs> let me add a little wrinkle to this sure <laughs> Bill Duran is an is an identical twin to his brother Jamie. Yes, he is, and vice versa. And vice which versa, is, which is uh, almost unheard. It's of. crazy yeah. how it goes it's back crazy. and forth. Yeah. yeah. So let's say Jamie and his wonderful wife are lost at sea. <laughs> yes. Does Jer does does but he is already a stepfather by genetics, right? Of the kids, even though Bill has no kids. Bill, Bill is from genetically speaking. Bill is the, is the genetic stepfather of these kids. I think I think that might be a bridge too far. I mean, uh, I, I bet it's true though, right? I mean, it is. He's the genetic. He is the de gene genetic identical the, to to his he's brother. He's identically genetic to the child's biological father, but right. I think that's where I don't think you can just extrapolate that to being he's a he's a stepfather. <laughs> So he's, yeah. he's an uncle with the same genetic material. I mean, it's you know, it's um, uh, <laughs> I know it's not the same thing, but would you adopt if you're if you're uh, uh, if if Wendy was lost at sea? Yeah, <laughs> would you guys just automatically? You would probably automatically take in their kids, right? I'm oh sure yeah, we'd do that anyway. Do whatever you whatever you do to help. Yeah, yeah, but we um, but there'd never be this moment of like. I am your father. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I like, don't think there would be that with Bill Duran either. <laughs> I don't think he'd ever think. I don't think he'd ever think to himself, "Wow, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm really just placement away from being your father." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in a different place at the the same time. Or something right, like that. right. So there, so individuality obviously plays a big role in this. <laughs> <laughs> right, obviously, because uh, we're all individuals. It doesn't matter whether we, you know, we're twins or not. But I just think it's interesting that we, we have definite as human beings, we create definable things. It's like you are defined as a mother or father. You are de de defined as a le yeah. the legal guardian or blah blah blah. We have these definitions, and I I always find it fascinating when you can not challenge them, but you know, <laughs> it just you look know, at I, them think, I think you're you're uh, you're wanting identical twins to basically be Jamie Madrock's multiple man is what you're wanting. <laughs> well, I don't know if I want it. It's more of a, it's more of like, is there a convenience factor? Like, could you, you're, they're like Michael Keaton multiplicity is what you're, uh, is what you're envisioning. Spectators, uh, in the chat says identical twins are not hundred percent identical on the DNA level. I thought they were, I thought I thought because that is their genetics, their literal genes, right? Genetically identical. Yeah, so, that I don't. That I don't know. So that's if, a really if good. If that's Bobby the case, question. then I then I don't. Is it something that changes? I later? noticed Bobby Frankenberger strangely silent. Oh, he's not here. Oh, okay. Merrick Scott is the most stone sober person I've ever seen. Look, <laughs> sometimes these things pop in my head. They've done it my whole life, so. You know, why not talk about them on a show? It's a good place for it. Yes, exactly. Um, do they have different fingerprints? I don't know, Zoe. I don't yeah, know. That's a, that's a really good question. I assume so because 
there's variation at very low, you know, at, at very specific levels, right? No matter whether you're identical or not, why would Bill's skin form? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say because I don't know. I'll count confirms they do have different actually, and uh, uh, Kichu uh, confirms that uh, they do have different. Um, okay. Fingerprints. So if you fingerprint, let, let's say, okay, here's a new scenario. <laughs> Jamie turns out to be a serial killer. They find out. Okay. Uh huh. He would never do this. He's the nicest guy ever. But it, let's sure, just say for sure. a second that that he was. Um, and they go check his. Oh, we got to check his prints. We think we know where to find him or whatever. And they check the prints and say, "Hey, these look like they belong to a Bill Durans." The raid, storm, 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 and they go to Bill's house and arrest him instead. That doesn't happen because Bill's finger fingerprints are different. Right. 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 Okay. Yes. That was a long That's, way of me confirming that was a long the exact way of you thing. Confirming that fingerprints are different. Okay. <laughs> a very in the darkest way possible. Yeah. Uh, and this whole it's I funny. thought you were going to go down the down the, the the road of, you know, would Bill then be a serial killer because he shares genetic material no. with Jamie? Would <laughs> no, that no, make no. Bill a serial killer as well? No, because that see that's the there's the important important distinction action. Yes. Action is you're different. Product, you're not just a product of your genetics. You're a product of your environment. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you don't suddenly become the thing that your identical twin is. But don't they? They're always saying they got some kind of. I don't mean Bill and Jamie, but other people are always saying how twins. Um, I don't actually know if any of this is true. I just don't. I don't want to call anybody out because it sounds like BS to me. But twins were, were one will wake up at night and the other one will wake up because the other one woke up all distressed yeah, and they'll have like all, these moments. That sounds like bullshit. Bullshit completely. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be bullshit. Yep. Yep. I think but, it's a, it's one of those um, one of those uh, checkout line. The other checkout line is always uh, faster uh, than yours. It's basically yeah. like, what you woke up last night too? Oh my god, I woke up at, at three o'clock as well. And then you know the next night, one of them wakes up and they they you know. It doesn't go anywhere because the other one didn't wake up, and so it's you know we don't care. They don't draw attention to the ones where it doesn't uh, happen, yeah. or they don't finish each other's sentences, or they, you know, don't have the same exact thought about craving pizza at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and if it does happen the one time, people tend to take like you're saying they take it t too far. They, you know, mm -hmm. it's like oh you woke up, confirmed twins are connected yeah. all day long, and we wake up yeah. every. It's like wait a minute, where were you last night when I woke up? No, I slept. <laughs> oh, really? So it was only a one time. It's a coincidence, then, is what you're saying. Hmm. Right, right. Exactly. Uh, so, Janny in the chat says, Bill does not have fingerprints anymore. Too much gluing them together with super glue. That's a good point. I wouldn't be surprised, actually. Yeah. yeah. I'll bet they're effed at the very least. Like, they're not complete, or they got, like, a little bit Between missing. heat, right, exactly. Touching <clears throat> touching hot resin or something, or, you know, un, 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 uh, opening up a, uh, accidentally touching the, the blade that cuts the foam. Yeah, <laughs> ah, yeah, there goes another fingerprint. Yeah, he'd be able to tell us. Actually, I think we should ask him next time he's on. That'd be a good question. So, how are your how are your fingerprints, Bill? Are you ready for the uh, the the booking at the local PD when that comes? That's right, exactly. Or yeah. are they going to go? Whoa, Will Smith, easy with the burned off fingerprints. You're going to jail now, buddy. <laughs> I've actually uh, cosplayed my fingerprints to be exactly like John McClane in Die Hard. <laughs> Based oh, on uh, based on footage and uh, people zooming in really close, I was able to make my fingerprints exactly like John McClane and cosplay as John McClane. Wow, that there there now now we're talking. Now we're now cooking the, with the gas. Yeah, cooking with gas. This Brian. is right, exactly. Oh, and bringing up poor Will Smith after we find out the bombshell that uh, Jada Pinkett dropped this morning on the Today Show with Hoda. They have not lived oh. together for seven years. They've lived together, but they've lived as separated parents oh i thought it said they had actually moved away from each other but oh really did they i thought i, thought I read uh, that but that could be one article versus another i would think tmz would be able to pick up on that that isn't it strange that will smith seems to come out of a different house every morning than mm -hmm. jada pinkett smith uh to me that puts a different light on the smack and chris rock thing because yeah you know he did it supposedly because he was defending his wife well, maybe he was doing it because he's desperate to just get her back, and here's a chance for maybe. me to get defensive and fight for her in public. Maybe. Like, who knows why we do things, but still, I, I thought because that's you know that happened during this supposed seven year separation. Exactly. So why would you care? It's like ah, you totally nailed her. She does. She is like GI Jane with that haircut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Domo chat <laughs> ambassador Domo says says <laughs> the says the slap was a sham. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
He slapped oh, him. Oh, come on. It's because uh, <laughs> Rambe was in on it the whole time. You know, is what er- you're saying? Everyone thinks everything's a sham. Or people yeah, don't do. think. Exactly. Or there's actual shams people don't think are shams. That's what I've learned. Nobody yeah. knows anything. Uh, but yeah, overcompensation ICU. Uh, that is yeah. what I would say is correct. <laughs> Chris Rock's face disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got whacked pretty good. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, there's all that. Now it's time for some real news. No more philosophical ponderings, okay? About twins and who can have what and biological mm-hmm. yeah, brothers and all that. Yeah. Forget about all Let's that. Let's play a minute. game. We should play a game, Scott. I agree. I got to get Randy in for it, though. Okay. Because uh, he's today's deal. Hold on. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So we don't have Dunaway, but we do have Randall Cunningham Jr. Jordan johnson uh he's coming well, in now I, didn't realize he was related. That's amazing. I know weird right uh here we go here's some music <laughs> speaking of randy he's right here right now hi randy guten morgen scott ah, and brian yeah, oh no brian. somebody's replaced randy with the dubbed 11 labs version of himself weird weird How you doing? yeah do you know german at all german. are you a german oh man? gosh no okay. i i have been slowly picking up like video game words and phrases through all of my posting in 11 languages but no (laughs) no No, not really do you how do you feel about does do you have like a do you translate your stuff directly when you do those posts or how does it how's that go what's the process yeah we have we have teams around the globe we have teams of amazing localizers who uh translate our stuff and and get it back to us and then we have other teams who look it over and make sure that it's a you know correct and then and then it's given to me, and I go pretend that I speak uh, traditional Chinese, which sure. is uh, just really fun. Yeah. So, so fifteen years ago today, what was fifteen years ago today? Any guesses? Oh gosh, uh, um, 15, fifteen years ago. I know yeah. that. I know that way more than that. Today is the um, anniversary of the first episode of Saturday Night Live, but that's uh, that was ni- that was nineteen seventy six or seventy five or something. So that that doesn't uh, that's more than fifteen years. Yeah. Uh, Fifteen okay. years ago today was the second day of BlizzCon 2008. Oh, and it was the infamous performance by Patton Oswalt leading into Video Games Live, where he decided he wanted to tell an, uh, another joke after being asked to leave the stage. Yeah, and uh, he got very, very angry with the people asking him to leave the stage. Oh, and, really? Uh, oh. And, and so I was just looking at what I wrote. What did I? What did I write fifteen years ago today about all of this? Mm. And for some reason, there was a a leading comedian like a comedian that comes on first right yeah and you know like they are those are often called warm-up comedian but for some reason i called this person the warm down comedian and they <laughs> i said that he he came up and really warmed down the crowd and uh i was just like who was i didn't name him in my notes and well, I was really, like, so we don't even know who he oh, was who's the comedian who i didn't like before Pat Oswalt, and so I went looking, and I dug and dug, and I finally found out who it was, and it was Kyle Kinane, who I adore, mm. like m- my top five favorite working comedians right really? now. Really? Wow. I apparently okay. saw him at BlizzCon, didn't enjoy his performance, <laughs> and I feel really bad because he's incredible. I just like. Uh. What a strange thing, yeah. It well, is strange. Wow. Well, he, uh, you know, because you didn't name him, he may not have ever uh, Google vanity searched that article, so he may not have, he may not have uh, found your. Uh, yeah, let's let's hope your, so. Your post about that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, by the way, can I just thank uh, you and Blizzard for? I know I did this in our chat, but uh, for posting those STLs of the three dimensional characters in what I assume is vaporware at this point, uh, Warcraft Rumble. Yeah, uh, I can only assume it's. I can only. Assume it's vaporware because I'm not playing it. Well, it's coming when, out on uh, uh, when, the second. When is Warcraft Rumble being released? Second, uh, November right? third, November third, third. third. Yes. Yeah, you'll get it. You're just not Canadian nice. enough, Brian. That's your only problem. Apparently, apparently, I'm not a. Eh? Mm. Um, yeah. So, so uh, the, you know, they developed those. Uh, there's a guy at Blizzard who like uh, got got a 3D printer working on those inside Blizzard, right? And mm-hmm. was making mm-hmm. them so that we could like give them to uh, content creators and this kind of thing. And like that guy, I'm sure, is very. Classy. <laughs> it's been made public oh know? i'm sure yeah yeah that's a that's well, an arduous are... expensive process it is yeah. right because you know it's not just a matter of taking the the obj files from the game or whatever whatever they're designed in in the game and then just say oh boom they're stls now you've got to make sure they're structurally um 
printable. You've got to make sure, like, you know, you look at something like Blizzard or Holy Nova, there's a lot of empty space there that if you try to print something, it's just, it's going to fi- uh, fail immediately because there's nothing to connect it to the next piece on the printer. Oh, yeah. So he's got to go through and do all that stuff. Look at this These Holy are- Nova, you guys, what Brian's talking about. That thing would just, I, I if I tried to print that, it ain't working. So this better, yeah, exactly. I'm sure they've got it. Uh, they've thought of all they've those got, things. Uh, supports be- connecting the that sphere to the star in the middle and the explosion on the ground or the reaction on the ground. Um, could I, uh, Randy, could could you talk to somebody about me getting my um, my Morgarum uh, 3D print that you guys did? Uh, maybe that was also the 2015 uh, um, BlizzCon <laughs> where you guys had all of those 3D printed uh, player characters. Uh, that all was 2018. 2018, fighting when in Stormwind. When we did the huge right? diorama, it was yeah. the Siege yeah. of Undercity, I think. Yep, yeah. I think that's correct. That Undercity, right. Yeah. And yeah, I I have no idea. I'm pretty sure those are gone, but I don't oh. know. They might be all sitting. I'm that, sure they're backed up on a that on entire a diorama <laughs> is, is might be set, you know inside a storage unit somewhere. Oh like, sure. Well, I don't I don't necessarily need the actual you know the actual one you guys had on the floor, but the STL file would be nice. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Print yeah. that shit. So fig, figure prints be damned. Yeah. Screw That's those right, guys. That's right. Exactly. Yes. Screw the Ed Gein or not Ed Gein. That was the serial killer. Ed. <laughs> What was his Ed name? Freeze. Ed Freeze. Yeah, remember that guy? Didn't Ed he Freeze. come on the instance with us once? We did an interview with him. Oh, I think. Yeah, yeah, he was great. Yeah. He he is like he's the fa- the father of the Xbox, the original Xbox, and he went on to do figure prints, which was such a weird flex. But yeah, anyway. he's a lovely man. He's a great guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, well, let's get to the game. We're gonna we're gonna play a little game here. Oh, we got to bring somebody in for this. Um, oh yeah, we need a cone test hand. That's right. I'm um, pretty sure our third person is. Okay, this is a new person. All right. Let's hey, see if a I new can, person. See if I can add them to this without too much trouble. There we go. It shows they're offline, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, if this doesn't work, we'll pull in whoever was next after that. Uh, it's ringing. It's ringing. Uh, Asset, are you there? Hello. Hello. Yay, hello. How are you? Are you Asset in the chat as well? I'm actually Genius Doris in the chat. Oh, oh, Genius Doris. Okay, cool. We know you. Uh, You're new yeah. to this game, but not a new person. No, per se. no, no. I, but I'm I'm new on the on the live. That's right. Yeah. You're a genetically equivalent live caller today. No, that's sorry. I'm still continuing my thinking from earlier. Uh, hey, Brian, uh, explain to, to Genie Soros and to me and to Randy how this works today and what we could do. Okay. I will be happy to do that. It's time to play the Tadpooly Feud. I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy topics, and Scott and Randy are going to have to predict the answers that they gave us. And it's their job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Genie Soros, your job is going to be more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Randy, but not Brian. Aww. If Aww. your team wins, you get a prize package. What includes Flynn, Son of Crimson, and Pilgrims, which I can just assume is a John Wayne game. Pilgrims. Pilgrims. <laughs> Hello, Pilgrims. I don't Please think collect that. four <laughs> ox tusks from, <laughs> tusks from the uh, from the field to bring them back to me, Pilgrim. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to get an impacted colon, Pilgrim. Anyway. <laughs> That was all. That's fake, right? That's all made up. The one thing that you think of when you think of John Wayne, yeah. not the airport, no, not the uh, not True Grit, no, not uh, anything like that. None you of that. It's all about the colon the fake rumors this. that he died of a of a giant impacted colon. I, I yeah. don't think it was true. Yeah. I think he just. I think he ate a lot of steak, but I think that was about the end of that oh, rumor. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, anyway. is that a problem? No, it, was, it, it was cancer. <laughs> yeah, it was cancer, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. at the time he was like, you know, everywhere he went, big giant T bone. That was his deal. Oh my no, goodness! But yeah, please stop nothing, saying that. Yeah, nothing's wrong with that, Randy. Just look okay. at Al Michaels. Dude looks like he's fifty, and he's really what did we figure out? One hundred and thirty-six. One hundred and thirty-six. Never touches never a, vegetable. a vegetable. Exactly. Never it's, eaten a vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> I just want I, the, what I really want is for the comparison to be that John Madden was like a vegan who got on the treadmill every day. <laughs> it's oh nothing but broccoli, and that's what that's uh, poor John Madden. Yeah, he wouldn't fly. He had to walk everywhere. That's how he stayed in shape. That guy. Exactly. Anyway. All right. Well, let's get into this game here. Uh, Randy, Scott, put your hands on your buzzers, which I think are just your space bars, if I remember correctly, and give your best answer to this. We asked 432 tadpoolers. The six of them opted out. Pfft, losers. Losers. Uh, but the other ones uh, told us their answer to this. Name the worst video game movie. Um, oh, there's somebody to choose from. So we'll just right. say Mar- the Mario one from the Mario Brothers from the 90s, the early 90s one. 
All right. Show me Super Mario Brothers from 1993. Oh, I yeah. got it. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, so. thanks. All right. Well, <laughs> it's pretty the easiest, bad. That's the, the, the <laughs> lowest hanging plum from that tree. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you, there's no other answers that will beat that one. So you automatically get Genie Saurus as a teammate. Awesome. Uh, good luck figuring out which other nine horrible video game movies the tadpool brought up <laughs> mm. oh wow yeah that's a um, warning. bit of a warning there from brian <laughs> what do you think genie saurus anything <laughs> jumping up to um you? well uh going back to the film sack day shit critiqueder oh street fighter <laughs> dude street fighter's a perfect answer we're doing that street yeah. fighter and it's funny how many people actually did say shit critiqueder by the way I, I love you guys you, you people are awesome oh, yeah. uh show me street fighter yeah. Number two. You know, I, right I always want to make uh, shit critiqued or t-shirts and like bring them to TMS Vegas or something. Yeah, but yeah. the problem is if you wore it in public other than at TMS Vegas, <laughs> no one would get it. No. They'd have you no know idea. What? You know yeah. how you do it? Oh my God, this is great. We got to do this. You put it in the Street Fighter logo, but you rearrange the letters. So it obviously says yeah. Street Fighter in the font. Okay, now we're making And uh, Now we're forward. cooking with some gas. That's happening. Yeah. Oh my gosh, That's between happening. you and Randy, yeah. we've come up with the greatest idea heck, in the history of Heck with the film sack karaoke album. We are making the shit critique to t-shirts. Hell yeah. I love that idea. All right, so All we right. got a number two. I feel pretty strong about Max Payne. Genie Soros, how do you feel about Max Payne? That sounds like a good one. Okay. Man, Max you sound good. Are you in like a fancy Payne. mic or something? We never get calls yeah. that sound this good. Are you in a <laughs> like in a are you in a soundproof booth like uh, Mariah Carey not. sings in? Okay. I am no, not, no. but I'm on a, a sure mic. Oh, nice. we sound that great. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. We're Let's gonna see. use you every week. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just gonna send all our contestants to go uh, play from Genie Saurus's sure. house. Why not? Uh <laughs> show me Maxwell Payne. Oh, come no. on now. Wow. Max Payne, Max Payne wow. just to make you feel better. Uh, oh, number 23 yeah. in the list. Okay. I thought it might be a low one, but oh, oh well. Technically right. tied for 21st because there's a lot of people, a lot of uh, um, movies that got five votes. I can't wait to go through this list once we're done and you're just like, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Real... It's an ugly list, I'm sure. It's an ugly yeah. list. All right, Randy, it's your deal now. Um, I, oh. I don't know which one to go with first. Um, I'm just going to take a big chance and say Mortal Kombat 2. Oh, Annihilation, mm. right? Was that what it was called? Annihilation? Something like that. Yeah, that's was a terrible two movie. Annihilation was 3 Annihilation. Uh, was there a 3? I don't even was think there, there was three? a 3. Okay, so 2 is Annihilation. I don't, I don't trust the tadpool to get those subtitles right. I don't so think I'm there was a third. Mortal, Com Mortal, Mortal Kombat 2. 2? Okay. I mean, there's All a right. third movie, but it isn't not in that time. Show me Mortal Kombat 2 colon Annihilation. Yeah, yeah, there, oh, right there. Number high 9 points. on the list. Jeez, oh, jumped ahead. Right. Already. Right. All right. Yes. Now, do I... Do I go with Mortal Kombat 1 or do I <laughs> do I let Scott find out about where that one is? Um, mm. Hmm. <laughs> this is tough. This is a really yeah. tough game. This yeah. one yeah, because like this one like I kind of I guess I'm here to guess Warcraft. I'm going to guess Warcraft yeah. because I kind of trust the tadpole to it's on have, here. have over emphasized <laughs> oh. the downsides of that movie i can I, I, almost it's guarantee kind of, it's on here i'm just it's sure mine, I, it's mine to guess right but yeah. i just oh it makes me sad but yeah. i guess let's money. see if warcraft's on this list all right show me warcraft yeah, yeah number six damn it Jeez. all right yeah. i liked that movie i mean there was stuff it to been like better cool. but i liked it yeah there were things to like there's no doubt about it wow. um Gosh, and there's so many that are like a bunch of sequels, right? Yeah. Like there's a there's a series that I would love to get into, but I don't know where to go in first. And oh. if I if I miss, yeah. then Scott's definitely getting the the, the, <laughs> the one. So, um, yeah, I know which uh, one you mean. I know already. exactly like what to, you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, I would like to see. Uh, we're gonna just give pass the mic back to Scott. I would like to see if Max Payne made the top ten here. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, let's go with that one. Um, <laughs> show me Max Payne. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a red on air guess right there. Yeah. Was, <laughs> is it? Yeah, my yes, my, was, my third. Was or, guess. Yeah, was I my thought that was. I thought he guessed something else completely. No, right. no he, uh, he, <laughs> it's still still sitting at number twenty three in yeah. the. Uh, uh, number 23 all right yes. let's let's hold on let's fix it in my brain uh <laughs> it's a, it's got mark Wahlberg. yeah it sure uh, does it sure we, does we watched it and hated it yeah yes, bad correct all right it was a poor film right, 
I'll guess I'll I... just sit again in a couple minutes. Go on. All right, Can I interest great. you in a slightly used Street Fighter? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. There are a lot at the bottom of this barrel. I was just thinking, I just was reminding myself of all the horrible uh, Uwe Boll stuff. Oh, yeah. um, and there is oh, wow. a lot of those, but I don't know how many of these will be mem- remembered. So, by the way, two people, two people actually answered anything Uve Bowl. Oh, did they? Wow! <laughs> I couldn't obviously couldn't make a didn't didn't make it high enough to make it on the list. But uh. so, Jeannie, there's this Jason Statham thing from I don't remember the year even. Call it was the Dungeon Siege game movie, and it was called For the King. Hold on, hold something for the king did it i i was gonna guess this didn't you like watch this on adventure club a few months ago uh no this is one i've avoided because i'm pretty sure oh, we will oh, we'll oh, film I know where this. we heard about it recently i'm just gonna keep my mouth shut oh all oh, right wow. well there you have it then uh so let's go with that brian is that enough info do i need the full yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you uh you are talking of course of in the name of the king a dungeon siege tale show me that one Oh, come on! <laughs> that was uh, uh, also in that little cluster around uh, number 22. Ah, uh, frick. Yeah. I've never seen it. I hear it's really, really rough. Yeah, this was mentioned by Brian Dunaway at some point uh, earlier this spring when we were all talking about these these yeah. kinds of movies. Yeah, and I'm um, guessing I remember when what, what sparked that conversation, too. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, I think Ray Liotta was in that. It sucks because like they're bad, so nobody watched them. So what are what are gonna people go with less around? Sure. Uh, they're bad. Like um, <laughs> maybe let let's try Blood Rain. Oh, okay. Blood Rain! I remember Blood Rain. Right. Yeah. Show me Blood Rain. Oh. Damn it, number ten. Holy shit! Big oh, points. Nice. How right do there. they get Blood Rain? That's another Uwe Bull thing. How do they get yeah. that and not the name of the can? I'm shocked. I don't know. This. I don't know. I am just trying really, really hard to think of like movies that people have actually seen. (laughs) Right? That's the trick with these. My next guess is gonna be a movie that I saw, but I just don't know if others did. Yeah, but But keep in mind it's the tadpool. They watch way more stuff than we do. They do, they watch a lot of crap. So I'm gonna hope that they watched the ultimate crap, which was Double Dragon the movie. (laughs) That was bad. All right. All right. All right. Oh wow. Show me Double Dragon colon the movie. Oh uh, man. No, that sucks. Words. Double mm. Dragon number uh 13 on the list just outside of the top 10. Wow. How is it number number 3? We're not even even dancing around number 3. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. I know. I know. Um Jeannie, had a, where, where is your heart out with Wing, wing <laughs> well, Commander? Well, I've, I've been sitting here trying to think of movies that are not only bad, but that we remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do we remember Max bad. Payne? What about that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think about uh, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson joint and Doom? Oh, Doom. 2005's Doom. Um, that's a very bad film and also... I think maybe it'd be on here. So I'm going to say yes. Let's go with Doom. All right. Let's look at Doom. Show me Doom. That was a really long delay after I clicked that button. Number three on the list. Low points. Low points, but you're you're clear on the board, which is good. What do we think of Wing Commander? It's pretty bad. Yeah. Terrible movie. That had Matthew Lillard and Freddie Prince Jr., Mm. Oh, yeah, wow. it's very Gen X, which is very kind of tadpool. Yeah, I would yeah. say so. So let's, yeah, let's go. Let's fly into Wing Commander. This doesn't make sense. Right. Let's say Wing Commander. <laughs> Show us Wing Commander. Oh, Number good seven. Points. Now I'll we're making that. a game of this. Yeah. Because we could still right. win, right? What's and that? We either clear or we have enough points we could win. We could beat Randy still. You Right. You need, you need, um, Eight and four to tie, eight and five to win. All three, of course, clears the board and that's a win. Yeah. So that eight is crucial. You need number eight in order to uh one of you needs to answer a number eight in order for Jeannie Saras to get these prizes. That's a that's a guarantee right here. Okay. Uh Jeannie, anything popping for you? Um two, actually. Yeah. Uh Battleship. Oh yeah, but, I'm not, uh, but is that a video game or is that a? Oh yeah, it's oh. a board game. Okay, is, is, it, I mean, is that okay. a board the, game the, the or is, is the pad pool thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game? <laughs> that's a really good point. This could be a bit uh, of a risk. 
Let's think yeah. here. How and, much would um, they do that? What Prince was your other of one? Persia. Oh, you know what? I think that's the safe one because everyone's still mad at that movie. But let's do <laughs> Prince of Persia. I'm too nervous about. I'm nervous the other one's going to give us a third strike because maybe I'm giving the cre- too much credit to the tadpole and they're that dumb about <laughs> about Battleship. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to assume things. But let's say right. let's do your second choice. I like that better. Okay, so you're saying Prince O Persia? Prince O Persia. Prince of Persia. Oh! oh unfortunately wow. number 15 number 15 in the list if wow. we find out if we find out that it was the battleships on here i will genie i'll send you some really cool stuff in the mail regardless <laughs> oh, all right don't worry prepared to be amazed by the uh the lack of uh, attention paid by the tadpole as we as we go through oh uh, i'm sorry to hear that because we're all, we are all now aligned we're on the same team folks we right exactly out these now others. you got to work together if you get all three of these if you clear the board then uh so so there is no doubt that all like five of the pokemon movies the first ones the animated ones are bad movies yeah they're not uh, great. i hate to just pick one i think i would pick pokemon the movie if i was voting on this like the first one pokemon the movie was i'm sorry that's the second one they're they're really bad guys yeah. i just can't imagine the tadpool uh you know like all, all coalescing around one of them yeah. uh, enough to put it in this list and i'm sure there were some votes for pokemon which does not define any of them right there's no. like there's detective pikachu there's all the other yeah exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but like the animated ones from 30 years ago they're they're bad yeah, the late um, '90s, early 2000s stuff are very bad movies. They're not good, in my um, opinion. I'm sure we, some kids. Based kid, on a video game, or is based on a card game. Well, at <laughs> oh that point, God. at that point, okay, they would you. be. Well, at that point, they so would then, be. They would think of them as video games at this point. So next, I feel like I, uh, <laughs> I should. We should guess a Laura Croft Tomb Raider. That's the name of the first one, I think. The first one with the yeah. with the Angelina Jolly is Lara Croft, Croft Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider two thousand. But or the second one is worse. Like yeah, ugh. the second one is bad. The first one people like. Oh. What's that second one called? Um, this sucks. It does suck. Have this we, is hard. Have we already guessed Resident Evil? I'm no. my brain is completely no. Because right earlier now. you were talking about the series. That was the series you were worried about poking into, so you avoided it. But Resident Evil. But Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil's there's what are there ten of them? Like there's so many. But maybe, but maybe the tadpole just put in Resident Evil, the words Resident Evil, right? And like, yeah. Ugh. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeannie. I'm really uh, like really glad you're here. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I feel like poor Jeannie really got like. You know, it's like uh, uh, name a no, pick a number between one and a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what this one is on paper, it sounds much easier than this is. Yeah. How do you, how do you feel about uh, us guessing? There's only two Hitman movies. We could guess one of those. Oh yeah, do that. Hit those Hitman movies Bro. are a real shame. Everything so let's them. guess the first one and see where it gets us. Okay. That's <laughs> right. been coming Hitman, up in the in the chat. So Hitman the first with bald Timothy Oliphant yeah. of all people. Uh, <laughs> oh seven. All right. Oh, oh my six. god. Seven, all right. Uh, show me Hitman. Oh come on! Yeah. All right. Yeah, number twenty nine. I, I want to I want to appreciate for the world all of your grunts and groans and that you finally ran out of them, Brian. <laughs> thank you, thank you yeah. for trying really really hard. Yeah, really, like, I tried so hard to like steer you. You did pick up what I was putting down with Pokemon. I think you did pick up what I was putting down with Laura Croft. Yeah. I just ran out of noises that what I could the make. Hell? To steer like, you is yeah. it Need for Speed? Is that in here? Well, uh, let's see what well, you got. What's what's let's four? Find out. Number four. Um, you 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 talked about this and never actually settled on it. Mortal Kombat the first. Hmm. Uh, okay. I think yeah. people, but people yeah. are generally fond of that. I thought that wouldn't be on here. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. that always makes the list of what were the ones that were actually good, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's I would a, call it good. It was fun. It was not good. It was fun. Yeah, that's a yes. That's fair. Like the newest now, one is fun, but not good. I'd say 18 the same thing about it. people. Um, actually, before I even show number five, okay. I did take what actually was number five out um, to give you guys a little better of a chance. But 19 of our of our friends here in the tadpool put 
E.T., the extraterrestrial. Oh, the game, oh. the one that got oh. buried. <laughs> because, it's, because they didn't pay attention to the question. Yeah, they it's right. flipped. It's, a, <laughs> it's the <laughs> other way around. It's a horrible <laughs> video game based on a yes, movie. exactly. <laughs> right. And, so, and, and uh, by the way, naming the worst game the worst game movies. This is the worst game movies. Naming the worst movies based on games is what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. Naming the ET list, right? The, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the, what did, what do you get? It's not a novelization. It's novelization. No, it's, of a, book. it's a, a movie. Or it's a g- video game based on a movie. I mean, yeah. it's a, an adaptation. Adaptation. Uh, there's the word you're yeah. looking That would for. be yeah. even harder, right? Yeah. Like, yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cause there's so much out there. Um, now, you you said something very key there a minute ago, Randy. You said we're talking about the worst movies based on video games, which I which was my intention when I wrote this question. However, let's say we're not. Let's say we're saying a video game movie that's not based on a video game. What would you say is the answer to that? Well, Battleship, probably Battleship. I mean, well, um... no, 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 the, no, no. The worst, the worst movie that's not based on an actual video game, but is still a video game movie. Oh. Oh, like Pixels. Oh, Ready Player One. Ah, it's Pixels. <laughs> pixels number five. Oh, um, I get what I, you're saying. I felt like I could take out ET. I felt like uh, I have to. I have to show the tadpole uh, how it wrong is, they are. But... I mean, if it's just <laughs> it's the a phrase, video game movie. Yeah. it is a video game movie. Yes, that's yeah. That's yeah but it's like point. here's here's Pac Man. Here's another. Here's a Millipede. It was more like an Atari movie or a Atari Namco movie in a weird way because <laughs> it was, was all a yes. bunch of stuff. But yeah, that's a. That's the chat room not understanding the assignment. They're not sorry, chat room. Yep. Sorry, tadpool at, at, yeah, at large. We, we would have we would have dug forever. We would have been talking about the legend of Chun Li long before we ever thought of pixels. Oh hell yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell now yeah. if I were to say uh, Fassbender would, uh, oh, would that give you an damn idea it, freaking Assassin's Creed is on there. Yeah, Shit. number eight. Yep, that movie is really terrible. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It, oh, it's so unfortunate. He's such a great actor. You had decent writers. There's no reason that couldn't have worked. I don't know what happened. And honestly, that game has real real potential for a movie. I agree. It really does. I t- more than any, almost more yeah. than any oh, other series. You could do, sure. you know, these. You could even do every movie is about each one of these protagonists throughout time. Like you wouldn't mm-hmm. make the most amazing series. I don't know why they don't yeah, do that. For sure. Uh, let's go through the rest of these because there are a lot here <laughs> that will make you guys go, oh yeah. Uh, number since number eleven was Blood Rain because I took out ET. Uh, number twelve, Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within, That's uh, Uncharted, Alone in the Dark, mm. Angry Birds or the Angry Birds movie, House of the Dead, uh, Resident Evil was there, uh, uh, Sonic, uh, Tomb Raider, the first Tomb Raider, uh, Pac Man. I don't remember a Pac Man movie. I know there have been cartoons and stuff like that, but I don't ever remember a Pac Man movie. Yeah. Tron is a questionable one. Because the movie and the video game came out the same day, or the the arcade game, I think, yeah. came out the same day, or at yeah. least released as a tie as a as a it's tie-in. a tie-in. Yeah, that doesn't feel like a, uh, it's yeah. also like a, a Mortal Kombat. Like the first Tron right. movie is one that people think they hate, but they then others watch it and say they like it. Ooh, I love right. the first exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, Cradle of Life was the one you were trying to remember the name of. Uh, Pong, Postal, Rampage, Street Fighter, Legend of Chun Li. Yeah. Um, Ballistic X versus Sever. I don't. I don't think somebody was. I think that's based on. Isn't that? Uh, that's is not that a video, video game. game? That, that's a. That's, that's a spinoff of. Uh, is it even a uh, spinoff? Is it just a? Or is it even a spinoff? Was it just its own thing? Some Maybe it action thing. Yeah. Thing. I don't think. Yeah. Really... Uh, Dead or Alive. Donkey Kong. Dune. Far Cry. <laughs> He man, Dune. Uh, I'm so, sorry, you, Dune. Are you guys even reading? Are you guys even reading the question? Why did they right? say Dune? <laughs> did, I don't know. Dune was uh, a great video game, but also that book was written in the '60s. What are you guys exactly, talking about? Exactly. Uh, Monster Hunter. Uh, no Man's Sky. That it's a, doesn't it's exist. A game a, that, it looks also, like a movie. But, it's also yeah. an excellent video game. This one's a terrible answer. <laughs> Pitfall, Silent Hill, Spore, uh, Superman sixty four. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the Witcher 3, uh, something called Utopia in television. Only one person said it, so it like, not even, didn't make a dent. what dead. that is. No. And finally, Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, geez. Another combo of characters. Another pickles, uh, I love Wreck-It Ralph, too. That's a I great do movie. I do, too. Exactly. Yeah, like, if you're going to complain about a, video, a movie that is, that is video game themed, even if it's not based on actual video game, Wreck It Ralph is probably one of the better ones. According so to I Rotten Tomatoes, they have the here are your top bottom three. Okay, so your bottom okay. three in reviews, like tomato rating, in video yeah. games only. At, yeah. at third worst, House of the Dead, 
which it sounds like nobody added on there. Another Uwe yeah. Boll movie. That was 3%. Street okay. Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li, 3%. And number one, Alone in the Dark, 2005, oh my God, 1%. One. <laughs> Alone in the Dark. Not, we, have a, we need to do that for film sack, I think, right? Oh, I think what? so. Yeah, I Chris, think we Chris should. Chris Slater, it, it, like, he's always bad, but he's in a good way. You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. I like him in most things, but this thing, garbaggio. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. So movie. I looked up and salutations. <laughs> I looked up the release of Ballistic X versus Sever the video game. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like the video game came out four days before the movie. So I <laughs> you can't tie-in. say that it was based on it. Yeah, it's a tie in. It doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. Those nose never count. Again, uh that uh, and it sounds like another film sec movie. I remember Ballistic X versus Sever. And you know, it's confusing that with the um the rock, uh the the spinoff of um uh, oh, Fast and the Furious. Hobbs, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's easy to do. It's a thing and a thing. I do that. Yeah. Mix those yeah. up all the time. We're, we're both X and Sever bald. Is that what I'm, I might be thinking of it? Uh, they, I, that's a good question. I don't know. Where's somebody <laughs> bald? I have no idea. I have no memory of that. Well, yeah. here's the sad news, Jeannie. That's the sad news. Um, uh, but, yeah. but because... Uh, you're awesome. Uh, I'll, I'm still going to send you. I got some new pins in. I just want to send these to people. So I'm going to contact you individually and I'll send you some stuff. But don't worry. There'll be a future where these codes can be yours. I'm sure of it. Okay. Great. I'm really Thank looking forward you. to it. Thank you for being on with us. Randy, as always, the pleasure is ours. You'll be back here uh, in not too much time, probably about 20 minutes, because we're going to do uh, recommendals today. Oh, yeah. Right. And uh, so you're double. You got double duty today. How's that feel? It'll be the longest twenty minutes of my life. Love yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you. All right, uh, we'll do that real quick. Uh, after this break, we're going to take a break, and when sure. we come back, Tom Merritt will be here. We'll do a little tech time, and then we'll get back to our recommendals. That's all coming up after this song from Brian Abbott. Yeah, uh, time for something a little bit um, heavier than I've played uh, uh, recently. You know, I like to I like to mix up the days. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and have you know, like a little pop twee female singer from Sacramento one day, and then a power pop group the next day, and now we're going to go into uh, uh, well, <laughs> a lighter song from a heavier band, I guess is uh, uh, is where this one falls. Although this one builds, um, this is a chock full of undeniable and energetic tracks, reminiscent of late '90s skate punk that will appeal to fans of bands like Lagwagon, a Wilhelm Scream, Mill and Colin, No Use for a Name. This is what uh, Versus Machine said about this guy right here. He's from Montreal. The band is called Dead All Right, but uh, it's it's the solo project of Louis Charles uh, Britha Hume, uh, who is the front man for the band Brand New Lungs. Brand new album is called Dancing Through the End of Days. Here is the song The Great Ride. Well, guys, I peed my pants four times yesterday. Had to change my diapers five times. Is there anything unusual that might be giving you the gym jams? And we returned. Who was that one more time? Yeah, that is uh, Montreal's Dead All Right, the solo project of Brand New Lungs frontman Louis Charles Bertha Hume, or Louis Charles Bertha Hume, uh, from his brand new album, Dancing Through the End of Days. That is the song, The Great Ride. Sounds fantastic. Now, Sorry about the F-bomb in that song. Oh, I forgot yeah, about yeah. that. Sorry little, about that. Yeah. little F-word in the middle there. Enjoy. A little F-word. It's like a hair in your soup. Sorry. Just take it out and lay it on the table. Pretend it was never there. <laughs> I'm kind of in a tough spot here, Tom. Sorry. Hey, look who it is. It's Tom Merritt. It's uh, Ace Detect on the internet. That guy, man, he knows his tech. Yay. He knows his stuff. He's always paying attention and getting stuff done. Tom Merritt, welcome back to the show. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and still muted. Nope. I hear nothing. Still can't hear you. Nothing. I don't hear anything. Let's see. What's that about? Oh, yep, he knows. Yep. We got a finger. <laughs> we did. We did. And it was. It is not the one I expected. No, we got a finger from Tom. Uh huh. He's got it. He's figured it all out. Progress He's, is happening. He, it's because I, uh, I I forget on Discord. I have to run pass through. Oh so, yeah, right. Ah. This was a recent change, and um, yeah, yeah. I just need to get in the habit. Thanks for making me sound like such a competent technology person, <laughs> and then have me immediately undermine it. <laughs> It's That's all right. good. Here's the man who knows everything about technology. He never messes how to up. plug it in. Yeah, just that he needs to reboot it, but he's fine. 
Uh, no, it's really, uh, you know, as always, good to have you here. Been a lot going on lately in tech. What's with the fall and technology announcements? Why is that a thing? Is that a recent Because thing? of the holidays. Yeah. So you, you want to get your, your brand new stuff in front of people in time for them to decide to drop a bunch of money on it and buy it for each other in December. I guess, that's, yeah. Then the stuff they're bringing out is always launching in November or something. and. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and a lot of times I think there's a halo effect of that. Like that explains the new phones, the new such and such. And and then it just becomes a habit of like, oh, uh, fall is announcement season. So Dropbox is going to announce their new enterprise level AI search at the same time, even though you're probably not buying that for anyone for the holiday. Yeah, good point. <laughs> give the give the gift that just keeps giving Dropbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, AI search on <laughs> box.com. Did you, I guess you've been, uh, not to delay us anymore as to what you've got today, but um, the reviews so far for the MetaQuest 3 have been kind of off the charts. I didn't mm -hmm. expect this strong of a I'm reaction. Glad I, I'm glad I waited and didn't get the two. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the, the, the upshot seems to be uh, that uh, the price is a little bit high, yeah. but considering that the price for everything else, including the upcoming Apple Vision Pro, uh, is much, much higher, that, yeah, you're, you're, you're still getting bang for your buck at $500 for this thing. It's, it's funny. They keep talking about it being comfortable mm. when it's around the same weight as the Vision Pro, which everybody says is too heavy, mm. is it? Uh, is it just that it's because of the the new um, uh, way of getting what you're currently looking at through? So it's a mixed AR, right? So you're seeing your room as well. Is it? Is it making maybe that that makes it feel more comfortable? Like you're not. Can, uh, constricted in this black space, but oh. that you're seeing the world around you. Maybe or, or are they well, talking about the weight of the thing, like this? The, yeah, the I'm, I'm speaking specifically about the the weight on your head. Oh, okay, okay. but it's the but, same, right? The same weight. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's, so, it's they're, yeah. they're roughly the roughly the same. Um, in fact, the Vision Pro might even be slight a couple grams less. I'm not I'm not sure. That's but what I'm it, saying. It, I'm, I was saying it in, uh, very poorly. I, I think that people might be imagining that it's lighter or imagining that it feels more open because they're seeing their room through the but the vision pro lets you see the same world, deal yeah like in high resolution whereas the quest has that sort of screen door you know it's color now but yeah. it's yeah. still it's gotcha. still low resolution and and a lot of the times you're blocking all that out and just you know living in vr anyway so sure. i don't know it's yeah, an interesting I'm idea whether, whether <laughs> you know whether that that changes yeah. things or not I'm, yeah I'm not I, sure. I think it's just the the vision pro pitches itself as a productivity thing and so people are thinking okay if i wear this for hours at a time is that going to work whereas uh, the quest you never expect that you're going to wear it all day right, right? it's right. just mm -hmm. it's going to be like an hour or two and then you're done yeah we're on ign this their summary was they gave it a nine out of ten which is pretty high they said the meta quest yeah. 3 is the only headset under a thousand bucks that's capable of both untethered vr and mixed reality gaming but that's just one of several reasons why the why it is the new king of accessible vr and they go into some other arguments about um the price seems it's a big jump from the previous model right They're, that's right. big the big talk but this review and others are saying well, now that we've used it, it feels justified. Like those things, uh -huh. it feels like we got stuff for the money that we didn't have before with the previous model. And so, I don't know. It's, I think that's just good news for headsets in general. You know, it's a, the most affordable entry still, even at the higher price, which is, I think, partly why they upped it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious about it. I want to kind of get my hands on one and see see what's up. Um, yeah, it does. It does seem to have have made uh, an impression on reviewers who didn't say, "Ah, it's just the Quest Two with a faster processor," which is, which is significant. A lot of times, new models that's that's pretty much all you get. Yeah. Also, Quest kind of has the entire market to itself. Like, what do what are you comparing it to? Uh, the Vision Pro, which most reviewers haven't had a chance to even try on, or if they have, they've only tried it on for a short period of time. Uh, and the PSVR Two which is kind of a different situation. That's for a Sony PlayStation gamer who doesn't mind sitting in one place. Like it's not mobile, it's tethered, yeah. uh, but it's very good for that situation. And the Quest isn't trying to be for that situation. So right. uh, it's almost like comparing mobile gaming and, and console gaming. Uh, it's it's not a one for one thing, but I, I think I think we are set up and we talked about this on dtns yesterday we are set up for 2024 to be the year that makes or breaks vr 
Um, the, the Quest 3 is off to a very strong start. We're getting the Vision Pro. And, I, and that's expect to gain a lot of interest. Even if a lot of people don't buy the Vision Pro, enough people will that there will be that halo effect, right? There will be that situation where, where folks will say, uh, you know, like, oh, my friend has it or I got to try it. And if there is a killer app, then everyone will talk about it. And then the next version of the Vision Pro will possibly be lighter. Uh, German says they're working on a lighter one. Possibly there'll be a cheaper model. Uh, and then we're off to the races as everybody else tries to get in and do the same thing. Right. And Meta's well positioned to be like, we're already there. Uh, we're We're inexpensive. Uh, we may not be the most powerful, but we've got tons of apps. Uh, so I, th I think that's one of the reasons they're getting a lot of positive reactions too. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to watch. Um, I'm sure though you didn't come just to talk about VR because I threw that in your way, and now you've actually. Got oh sure, no. Really did cool. you did you all talk about the uh, PS5 yet? The oh, the slim? slim. Mm -hmm. No, the slim, um, uh, I, I was surprised that drive. usually yeah. usually they do when they do this slim refresh, which is not new for Sony. They've been doing it since the PS1. Um, they usually specs don't change they just get smaller and yeah tighter, tighter or whatever in this case there are a few spec changes there's some USB-C ports that were added and a bigger hard drive a full terabyte instead of the 850 or whatever it was that was in there before um that surprised me i don't know i just didn't expect yeah. any spec changes there's no they gpu also, or King, King missiled it detachable hard drive oh yeah. right I, yep that's right yeah yeah brian you mentioned uh, that it's a that is a very yeah. cool thing mm -hmm. i guess I'm trying to think what I would need to. Rem I guess. Yeah, to I mean, it may, it means they don't have to sell two different versions of the PS5 anymore, right? That they can just sell one and then sell the drive separately. Which well, they're still selling so. two, so they have the one with an optical drive, and then they have. But the I know, one. I know what Ibit means. Right. There's one model of the PS5, right? And you either buy it with or without that detachable drive, right? Otherwise, it's the same. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the, 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 the fifty dollars price unit itself is the same, but they're still detachable drive or not. So right. they're not selling. I see, but and they're selling the thing individually. So if you did get one of the, yeah. so if you buy it without gotcha. and then regret it later, you can pay thirty dollars yeah. for your regret and get it for. Interesting that they're still selling it as a combo. I guess yeah, they can discount a little bit to entice people to do that. I was thinking yeah. they're just so going to sell five hundred dollars if you get it all in one, four hundred fifty if you don't get the drive, and then eighty dollars to add the drive later. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, I'm looking yeah, at that's that's better. They don't have to manufacture two different models. Good. Right. That's that's probably a better way of saying yeah. what I'm trying to I'm say. looking at a side shot. I like the little cut down the side, the little uh I don't know, design change because it's a big mm -hmm. solid plate right now and on these new ones it's like there's a little segmentation there, which is part yeah, of they're... the whole removable drive thing, but um that looks cool. And also it's smaller. You can tell by the controller. It's still kind of big though. These aren't that slim, you know. Mm -hmm. Like thirty percent less space, yeah, but it doesn't look like it. No, it really doesn't. Like a, yeah. previous mod, previous slimmings, like the PS2 Slim, for example, in particular, was very drastically smaller. It was like, wow, how the hell did you cram that all in there? <laughs> a little unhealthy. Yeah, too. You lost too much weight too fast. That can be a real yeah. problem. <laughs> this is a healthy reduction in in volume. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now let's see. The PS uh, PS5 digital edition is increasing from three ninety nine to four ninety nine. Uh, the full fledged one will remain at four ninety nine. That's with the optical drive. Uh, but the price did go up on your on your digital. Obviously, for most people, this isn't even a thing you're considering if you already have one. It's like there's not really. A Wait, point. you're paying more for less. Yeah. Right. More for less. Mm -hmm. I, I love it when that happens. Love when I pay. <laughs> More for less, but that is what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, big uh, big deal for people who maybe put it off or you know want to get a smaller one. I don't think this is for people that already have them though. Um, they never no, really were. I don't think so. This is this is not a run out and replace your your PS5. Yeah, the PS3 Slim, you just however, really need two front facing USB C ports. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the extra the extra hard drive space is nice, but the yeah, um, I guess that's that too. I, I guess what I was would say about that is the only time I've ever felt the need to when I already had a PlayStation and felt the need to get the Slim was the PS3. The original mm. PS3 sounded like a jet engine all the time. <laughs> it was so loud. And then the PlayStation 3 Slim, was quiet as a bug in a rug. It was awesome. So I did it in that case. But yeah, not everybody needs to run out and do that. Anyway, available now for pre-order, I suppose. They're not in stores yet. Uh, no, but it's coming to the U.S. first, and then it'll roll out uh, elsewhere. Also, Adobe Max happening. I don't know if you've tracked that. A little uh, bit, yeah. Adding a bunch of upgrades to their their machine learning models, their large language models. 
Um, generative match is one of the things coming in Firefly 2 so that you can uh, generate an image. If you don't know, Firefly is Adobe's image generator, so you could do text to image. Uh, you can generate an image based on another image. Mm. So you can like highlight an image you've you've already got and say in text, okay, make me an image with these same colors or in the same style, but you know, throw a duck in there or whatever. Right. Yeah. This is uh, so I've had a few artist friends say that they are looking forward to this because finally they get to train their own work for their own reasons. Oh. Yeah. So they'll put in their own yeah. art and say, all right. I'm pretty happy with the way this was composed or colored or whatever whatever your reason for doing it is. Show me um, a perspective shot of the same world, but do it in blah, blah, whatever, whatever your prompt is. Yeah. And now that artist has a jump start on what they want to do next or whatever. I could see that being pretty beneficial uh, to, to individuals anyway. So we'll see what happens there. But yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that this particular event is like pretty heavy loaded on the AI side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's almost and Adobe Illustrator's getting a vector model. Yeah. First time Adobe's done text to vector. Yeah. Not the first company to do it. First time Adobe's done. Oh, text straight to ve vector. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Not just converting so you can it. Say, Make me a vector. There's also a, a demonstration they showed off for the future. The, that one's not out yet, where you could just do like a real scratch drawing and then say, turn that into a vector. Yeah. And it'll clean oh, it up like that. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. That saved me so much time from placing splines. Yes. Here's Reticulating the, those splines. Here's the yes. one. The, the big the big takeaway for me is from all these AI introductions in image software, and especially the leading company doing that, Adobe, mm -hmm. uh, and some others to a lesser extent. Uh, some people are mad about it. Like, well, what's all this focus on just automating everything? It's like, what are you supposed to do? You know, <laughs> why you hear are you that? making my life easier? Yeah, why Stop. are you making life simpler? <laughs> but I think yeah. regardless where you stand on the those issues, and they're complicated, mm -hmm. um, they'd be stupid not to. They'd be so mm -hmm. dumb not to be like going head first into this because if they don't, someone else will. Of course they yeah. are. Of course yeah. they're going to be like at the forefront of this. Because are you gonna just go ahead and let you know OpenAI or somebody else do it? No, you're Adobe. You gotta you gotta get ahead of the game. So I'm not I'm not shocked by that. Yeah, and if uh, you don't have like a moral or ethical problem with AI, which if you do, you're just not gonna like anything anybody does with AI. But mm -hmm. uh, but if if you're if you're got a more nuanced version of like you know I, I want training data to be handled different. I want artist rights to be respected better. Uh, which I, I think are, are reasonable things to believe. Ad Adobe's doing it right. Adobe is training things only on stuff they own. Uh, they have a lot of impediments to, you know, stopping people from abusing things, uh, stopping their their projects from from making something unexpected. Uh, and they're they're working with other companies. Uh, one of the things they announced at Max was a, an image uh, to put on AI generated images. It's a, it's a little mark, a little watermark that says CR in it. Microsoft is going to adopt this too uh, to show the provenance. Uh, Adobe's been kind of leading the way on tracking things and letting you see how an image was made. Uh, granted, if if a bad actor wants to hide that, they can. They can use other tools. But Adobe is making it easy for folks who want to say like, hey, if you want to check my, my work, here you go. Uh, so I, I feel like uh, Adobe is being cautious and, and conservative in how they implement this stuff while still implementing it. Yeah. What, um, do we know what that CR stands for? Like I would have thought it would have been a little watermark that said AI as opposed to CR. Short for creative, maybe creative cloud. Yeah, I, I but but it's it's not creative cloud. I think it it it's um, uh, content credential. I think it's the the hmm, CR is okay. for credential. So okay. oh, interesting. Well, I like it though. That's a, a mm -hmm. step in the right yeah, direction. It is for sure. And of course, they're gonna do it. It's freaking Adobe, man. Who do you expect to do image generation crap? Uh -huh. Like, of course, they're all up and in this. So anyway, that'll be fun to, to sum all that up and find out what's going on. And you can find stories like uh, coverage of the Adobe conference and other cool things happening on the Daily Tech News Show. I'm on there today. Tom's not there today, but me and Sarah are going to be there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Y'all um, It looks like Sarah wants to talk about that Utah law against TikTok. Oh, good. Because uh, here we go. It's been a lot of talk around here. <laughs> the teens aren't happy. They're not. They're the not TikTok stuck. teens. The TikTok are there, teens. The TikTok oh, teens are un unhappy. They're going to rise up and storm the Capitol. I don't know what they're going to do, but um, <laughs> but that'll be fun. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about that and other headlines of the day and other cool stuff going on in the world of tech. So do check that out at two thirty Mountain Time. Uh, no, sorry, two 
Mountain Time. It's not 2.30 anymore, That's, is it? used to be 2.30 years ago. Why do yeah. I do that still? It yeah. doesn't make sense. I would Old do habits are hard to break. They really are, truly. Tom Merritt, do you have any old habits you're working on right now that people can check out and I find? I do, I do, and you shouldn't try it yet uh, because you have to pay for it. And I don't want you to feel like you're getting uh, being experimented on, but I, I have a paid version of my tech newsletter, Tech Tom, uh, at Substack, and I'm experimenting with just writing up every morning the stories that I look at and think, well, that's interesting. Mm. These aren't stories that might make it into Daily Tech Headlines or Daily Tech News Show, because the purpose there with Daily Tech News Show is to compare views and have a lot of different perspectives. Uh, the idea with Daily Tech Headlines is, here's the most important stuff you need to know to understand. Uh, but this newsletter that I'm, I'm developing is more, here's stuff I'm keeping an eye on. Here's my opinion on these particular stories. Uh, and so, I'm developing that with a, with a few folks who are willing to to be paid subscribers uh, for that at Substack. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I, I don't expect you to pay for that, but I will let you know when I uh, when I feel like okay, it's it's in shape uh, and and it's worth it. Uh, so so keep an eye out for that. All right, very nice. Uh, and you can find a lot of this stuff over on your website, tommerritt.com, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, or or I'm in not Substack. Make, I'm not, I have a free newsletter in Substack too. You can yeah, I'm just making all this stuff up at this point. But Tom is everywhere. He's all places at once. You just That's need right. to take my word Probably for it. Too many places. Yeah. Too many places. Tom Merritt, everybody, uh, Ace Detect on all the socials. We'll see you next time. Thanks, y'all. Bye now. Oh, weird. Weird. Mm, nope, not weird. I guess. <laughs> I thought it disconnected us, but it didn't do it. So I don't know why I thought that. There was a brief message, and then it went away. Discord gods are treating me bad today. That's fine. Whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry. Fine. It's all fine. All right, let's get Randy back in. Let's get him back in the pool. Okay, you know, all right. Coming to the deep end, maybe the shallow end. I don't know. Where do we want Randy? What end of the pool do we want him in? Uh, the the warm the warm end right around Ooh. me. Okay, the warm, warm end where warm you're little, sitting. The warm little circle right around me. Your little your little uh, aura of of warmth coming from no, right, nothing nothing exactly. other than your just your your smiling personality. Not your, it's not your pee at all. It's not your That's pee. Right. Exactly, exactly. All right. Well, what do you recommend? I'll tell you what we recommend: stuff on streaming services. And today we have Randy No Nicole. She had some stuff, so we're uh, we're gonna forage on. Without her, wait. Foraging? Nope. That's getting berries and stuff. I don't forge know. Forge on. For uh, for uh. Forge? Probably forge. For, forge on? Yeah, Lee. It sounded right. Forage on, but yeah, I think uh, it's not right, is it? Because that's the nuts and berries and shit. Right. Exactly. Like you're you're picking up things. <laughs> you are. Well, I just found a forge, forge on. I yeah. found a Randy forge Deluxe on. berry hanging off the lowest tree. Hello, Randy. How are you? Okay. Hello, uh, <laughs> professional editor here. It is Forge On. It is Forge, forge On. on. Okay. And it's very rarely used. It's not yeah. worth not worth keeping in your vocabulary. Okay. <laughs> Good. Thank I'm gonna goodness. start I'm gonna start saying um, what can I tell people to do? Oh, you know what I like? I like what people say, is it walk on? Like it's almost walk like a, on. it's like what's the oh it's British or something where they go like they want someone to F off, but they say Keep going, no, but it's not keep going. It's just walk away. Wa walk on. I I really enjoy the whole uh, <laughs> discourse in The Hobbit where The Hobbit says good morning in four different ways. Yeah, that's always fun. Jog on. Well, that's it. Jog on. I like the phrase, but it doesn't sound good coming out of an American. It needs to be an Irish person, a British person, somebody from a place where they got kind of a sharp accent and they can go jog on. And, the, and that person feels offended and leaves. That's a great way to say it. Thank you, chat rooms, for coming in my uh, it's my. It's like there was defense. a Cheech and Chong song called Walk On. Cheech and Chong song, oh, Walk float On? Float On. Sorry, Float On. Oh, Float, float on. on. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, my gosh. That is, I can't believe how far back that. I haven't listened There's to Cheech a... and Chong albums in 30 years. Yeah, yeah Dave's well not here, man. It's completely unrelated. <laughs> Fair point. All right, let's get to these recommendations. We have some, uh, if not yeah. many. And uh, we're going to start with Brian, because we always do. Brian, what do you got here for us today? Yes. So this is, uh, I've, I've hinted about this one a little bit, because it blows my mind. It is a uh, a very well-written show with a great cast, with a showrunner who's got some terrific uh, um, terrific credits to his, uh, to his name. Um, 
but for whatever reason, the acting just feels wooden, and I can't. It must be something. Blame, I, I can only blame on the directors. However, all that said, I still highly recommend it. Uh, let's get to the audio clip. It all starts with a single phone call. Here we go. Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, night action. Uh, they 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 told me to tell you that. Code, please. Um, pen clock door fire. Hello? Are you still there? Is this uh, Sidewinder or Gazelle? What? I, I don't understand. What street did your best friend Elaine live on? I, I, I didn't have a friend named Elaine, okay? I, who are you? Who did I call? Look, I need to keep this line open, all right? You reached the wrong number. No, 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 please, please, please. My Aunt Emma, Emma Campbell, her and my Uncle Henry are in danger. They told me to call you. Hello? Yeah, I'm listening. They're in danger. There's intruders, and I, and I think they're after me, too. How many intruders are there? Um, I, I, I think two. I, I saw him. I saw one of them. I saw his face. Contact Foreign Hawkins. We have a night action alert, Sidewinder, and Gazelle. Oh, my God. What's happening? It's going to be all right, OK? What's your name? Rose. Okay, Rose, I'm Peter. I'm going to help you. It sounds, you're right. It has a weird uh, fake actor thing. Going. There is, yeah. yeah. And um so, so this isn't uh like an Asian language thing where <laughs> no, it's, people it's, are doing English dubbing. No, it is actually, you know, it was done in English <laughs> and uh performed oh. in English. And yeah, no, this is um uh a Sean Ryan joint. Sean Ryan, the guy who did the shield and the unit and um lie to me. Uh, this is a, a new thing that he's uh, got on Netflix called The Night Agent. And this is um, based on the novel by Matthew Quirk. Uh, you heard Gabriel Basso there. Uh, you know him from um, The Big C, Super 8, Kings of Summer. He's He looks like if you put all of the the uh, handsome Chris's of Hollywood into a blender, this is what you'd pour into a glass. <laughs> Wow, that's a yeah. interesting wow. way to look at it. Yeah, yeah I like that. Uh, like like uh, all the all the parts of all the Chris's just kind of put into there. Um, and also, uh, Luciana Buchanan is who you hear uh, as well in there. I didn't recognize her from anything else, but um, she's she's really good. She actually is one of the um, better performers in this thing. I think even Gabriel Basso is very good. If it's kind of like your twenty four. Um, your Jack Bauer kind of intense drama. Basically, here's the here's the the, the premise. Um, this guy Peter Sutherland uh, Sutherland, who you're hearing there, uh, works as the night agent. He works in the uh, the bowels of the FBI. Um, he's purely there to answer this phone for his night shift, um, where agents can call in and say, "Hey, I've been compromised. Here's my code." Da 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 da, and then he will route it to the appropriate. Um, the appropriate uh, people to handle, the appropriate agents to handle. Um, in this case, though, he gets more involved because he he kind of breaks his rules. You heard there, he's, you know, wait, you didn't say the right code. I should probably hang up. All right, I'm going to help you. And so he does get more involved um, in this whole conspiracy about uh, a mole in the, um, uh, the U.S. government. Um, some other people that you know in this thing, um, D.B. Woodside, uh uh, we've seen in a bunch of other things, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, The Temptations, Parenthood. Um, and Hong Chow, who's one of my favorite uh, actresses of the last uh, 10 years. I mean, she was incredible in The Whale as uh, um, Brendan Fraser's best friend. But we've seen her in Downsizing. We've seen her in... Um, uh, the Watchmen TV series, and she's she's just great. She, for some reason, gives one of the most wooden performances I've ever seen, and I can't figure out why, because she's so great. She was nominated this year for Best Supporting Actor uh, Actress uh, um, thing. Do you think when that happens, is it's a director thing, or it's like a maybe? I think maybe, it's a director thing. Yeah. That, that actually is what I blame it on. Um, they do a thing that you see a lot with uh, um, series these days, where you get different directors for every episode and maybe that is you know there's there's some episodes that maybe feel a little bit more cohesive than others mm. but um uh and there are names like you know seth gordon um 
Guy Furland, Rama Mosley, but the one that surprised me the most is Adam Arkin. Uh, oh, directed a couple episodes of this thing. Huh. He directed a and, couple of Fargo season two as well. He's he's got director chops. Um, he does have director chops, and in you know looking at the episodes that he did, those were particular bright spots. Oh, um, interesting. So you're probably yeah. right. I just wondered if maybe they were aiming for a certain tone, and so everybody acting not poorly but acting in that way was supposed to add to a tone but it just didn't work or something maybe or? yeah maybe mm. um the thing i'd probably equate this to uh if it's not 24 i would definitely compare it to bodyguard or the bodyguard the one with um uh rob stark oh that was a great <laughs> i love that show that was great. yeah this 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 has that same feel and tone and the storyline uh, you know really gripping tension and um uh a fantastic story and if you can just, and we were able to get past the the acting fairly quickly. It just surprised us early on. But um, uh, once you get past that, it's a really, really good watch. It's a very gripping, compelling watch. How many episodes in the season? Uh, ten episodes, about an hour long each. We got more coming, um, or is, uh, do we know if it's? Yeah, a... this is uh, supposed to be a let's see, continuing series, and uh, March uh, of this year, Netflix renewed it for a second season. Okay, so yeah, I know it's been a bunch of time in the little top ten thing they always show you and, yes um, when it first yeah. came out it was in there a lot so i thought well whatever this is must be okay because it's you know yeah it's yeah. in their top three or whatever so cool uh, yeah the very, night very much worth it just, just get past the uh just get past the acting and uh and who knows maybe you know maybe tina and i were just put off by it and it's really not that bad <laughs> maybe yeah. it's the case mm. but uh uh the night agent and and the rest of it excellent and worth watching netflix everyone Netflix. Uh, turning the microphone in Randy's direction. Randy, I've got a clip here for you. Do you would uh, like to set this up some? Or uh, it's been a couple there? weeks now. So let's see. Uh, yes, I remember what the show is. I don't remember the clip exactly. Um, <laughs> this is one of my favorite shows now. Like it's where we're into. <laughs> this is as as good as it gets for me. I really want to encourage everyone to watch this show. Uh, it's a uh, this clip you're going to hear is a couple of guys who are, but they both did time and they're both uh, sharing a garage bedroom in the morning. All right, here we go. Talk, pick up your shit. It's on my side. <laughs> Every day it's the same thing with you. Do something with your life, go get a job. You should try giving up. Shit is tight. You know what, I pity you. Damn, over here trying to get my day started now I'm sitting here filled with pity? <laughs> <laughs> back to this fool this fool <laughs> is a just a a diamond in the rough uh we have a, a a comedian that you never heard of before this show because he was very small time named chris estrada who plays the lead and uh he of course is buddy here is frankie quinones who has made a name for himself as creeper on tiktok uh, Frankie Quinones is another small time comedian and they came together. Uh, they got money from Fred Armisen to make a show and the show is awesome. It's so funny. It's, ne it's, it's very, very R rated. Just want you to just want to remind you, I recommended, <laughs> I recommended season one last year. I'm recommending season two right now because it's out and it's real good. And they actually, they actually did some development on this show between season one and season two. It's a sitcom. So, you know, there's only so much you can do. I, I like to call it a uh, one day at a time. Only it's about former gangsters who got out of prison. Yeah. Uh, which is like that right there. Is, but yeah. um, it's very, very, very funny. And in season two, they start doing themes and mm, the themes, uh, theme shows are just incredible. Like there's, there's a whole episode in season two that where they leave the main characters behind entirely and they develop of these other characters yeah. and so like if that's one of those things that prestige television shows sometimes do right yeah and you're like what is this fool doing here <laughs> but it's an incredible episode it's so moving and and it's like touching it's about an older woman who uh, retires and has to deal with uh you know not having a job anymore sure um this the show is uh i just want to say again incredibly crass this is um <laughs> 
this is as R rated as you can get. So for wow. instance, one of their friends is a former gangster who became a minister in prison, got out of prison, started being a minister, what didn't really enjoy it. So he decided to start trading on the fact that he has the largest penis in the world. Right. And, uh, the jokes about it are nonstop around this character. Mm. Um, you should, you should, it's not for the kids is what I'm saying. All right. But if you're really into penises, get in there. Get on, get on that. Uh, well, that's cool. I will. That sounds like uh, I've been here, and that was good. So it's nice to have some it's, confirmation. It's, it's in my like three reasons to subscribe to Hulu. Wow. Like seriously, that's where wow. that's where this is. What are your like, other two? Just curious what those are. I I feel like if you haven't watched Murders in the Building, or like the first season or two, uh, you're really missing out. Uh-huh. That is one of the best things uh, that's come along in a long time. We yeah. just and, finished the uh, the newest season a couple nights ago and really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, I, I hear a lot of like people saying, oh, third season sucks or second season sucks. I, it's a great show. It's just yeah. like, enjoy it. They did a good job. It, it's fun. Yeah. My other one right now is Reservation Dogs, as we've discussed. Mm, yeah. um, I, and it's just like Reservation Dogs feels important to me. Um, this fool uh, is uh, is funny. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. you know it's not uh it's not important but it's so fun i just really enjoy you know yeah like mm-hmm. these guys are these guys are pouring everything they ha- have comedically into making you laugh and uh it's just a the perfect setting right like uh it, i i it's somewhere in la they never actually say you know they don't say East LA, uh, you know, seventh street. They, but like <laughs> they, they definitely depict it. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm in, that sounds like a great show and I will not have children around while I watch it. How about yes, that? please don't. Don't watch it at work either, Scott. No, no. I mean, I don't want the boss after me. No. Gosh. <laughs> um, all right. This Excellent. is full season two. All right. Go check it out. Hulu. Uh, here is mine. This is a documentary. It's season two of one I recommended on the show before. I think it's uh, worthy of follow up. Here's my clip. You got into court you know, around 8 a.m. in the morning. Court usually started around 9 or 9.30. There was a line of people wrapped around the courthouse. It looked like a, a ride to get onto a Disney roller coaster. We are heading straight into the courtroom. I'll see you in South Carolina. People took pictures of all the news outlets. Some even filmed social media videos. My team and I arrived at the Carlton County Courthouse at about 8 o'clock. You know, it is just madness here, really. It even goes on and on and on. All right. So that's kind of nondescript. But the uh, <laughs> the show is called The Murdaugh Murders, A Southern Scandal. This is season two. And the first season came out a year or more ago. And it was right up. And they told the story of these, of these killings and these murders right up to the point that the dad uh, was arrested for being the one that pulled the trigger and was faking the whole thing out and making everybody think it was somebody else. And that's as far as it had gotten because that's also as far as the case had gotten. So in the intervening months, there was progress in the case. He was found guilty uh, in kind of an overwhelming way. And nobody was quite sure what happened in the courtroom to drive the jury to make that decision so very quickly. Um, And season two is all about revealing what those things were. And I guess I would say if, if you like true crime documentaries, this is a good one. Um, it's not the best one ever made, but it's a pretty good one. And I think the second season does bring a lot of new stuff to the table and makes it worth it. You know, unlike, I don't know, Tiger King season two was stupid. Yeah. Just oh, a yeah. waste yeah. of time. Such a, gra- such a money grab. Or a- Yeah. And you could tell. Yeah. You just feel it the f- yeah. from the moment yeah. it started. I had to bail on that. Um, but this one is like actual follow-up on a thing that you kind of had hanging on the last season. It wasn't like a cliffhanger, but there were a lot of things you just didn't have answers for. And this brings those to light. I think the story around the whole thing is is super weird and fascinating, and um, it's good. Um, you, you know what you're getting into, though. If you've seen true crime documentaries, you know what this is, and that's exactly what it is. There's a lot of in court footage. There's a lot of uh, talking to new witnesses, some people that were on the jury, uh, some people that worked for the Murdaws at the time of these murders that we didn't hear from in the first season because they can talk now. Um, so it's, it's a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, there's another documentary about this family on HBO. I forget what it's Southern something. It's got to hold on another name. Um, it's a little more sensationalized. I didn't like it as much as this one. This one is, is at least mostly focused on facts and not 
fake drama or creating it's music moments. Low Country. Low Country. Mm. That's it. It was okay, but I think this is better. Um, and now that there's two seasons, it feels like a more complete package. Uh, so worth checking out if you uh, if you're into that sort of thing. And you already I, know if you are. If you like true crime stuff, you already know. If you don't like it, you already know. So, I, uh, what I want to know is every this ha, this occurs to me every time I read or hear about someone who has some money usually, mm. and they die in a boating accident or yeah. in a small plane. Yeah. There's are we supposed to ever get in boats or small planes? <laughs> <Are> we... <laughs> it happens it, more than you like. It does feel it's probably just coincidence or it's the ones we hear about, right? Cause it's Kobe Bryant or it's some other, you know, the co-founder of DuPont or some, somebody somewhere mm-hmm. is a big deal to go down in a plane, JFK junior, mm-hmm. whatever. So I think, I think there may be a confirmation bias going on with that where lots and lots and lots of people die on boats and other things, but they're just not prominent names. So we don't hear about them. So we only hear about it when they're prominent. So we start attaching the idea that, well, all prominent people are just a, a day away from dying in a boat or a plane i don't know it's hard to say but you're not wrong i mean it it does sound too easy right to yeah. just say like well you know you do you want to be like buddy holly or john denver or richie valens or leonard skinner or stevie ray vaughn or ronnie vincent like oh my god stop yeah. right like yeah. do, it, I, it sounds like small planes are a death sentence <laughs> that can't be that yeah. can't be like people go out in boats on lakes all the time right mm-hmm. they're not that how did these people die in a boat? <laughs> Scott, you watched it. Yeah. What, how do you? Yeah, well, the kids. So fall the, out. The whole boat <laughs> thing was a kid. Uh, the rich guy's son's girlfriend got killed in the boat. And the boat thing's where it started or where things started to fall apart. But it turns out this family has got some history, man. There is some yeah. bullshittery going on. And the drug abuse alone is a fascinating little tangent, but there is uh, it goes crazy places and really speaks to the idea of people in power, even in places no one knows about in small communities that no one's ever been. There are power structures that if not, you know, attended to properly can lead to death and all sorts of terrible things. And that's kind of what these documentaries are about or these, these seasons. And when I say seasons, by the way, it's only like three episodes per season. They're short. So it's like, you know, I, don't, I can't think of what to compare it to, but it's like documentary season is not always 10 episodes or whatever. It's like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. three to six or something. I think this new season like, is three. I feel like in your household, Scott, every season is documentary season. <laughs> oh, I love me some documentaries. Big fan. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is a good one. So if you're interested in that stuff at all, go check it out. And of course, Brian will have all three of our entries today up on quicktms.li. Probably already up there. Already does. Uh, so go check those out. Randy, is there anything else you'd like to say today before we let Just you go? Just watch, please watch The Haunting with me, and we're gonna uh, talk about that on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. The Haunting with the, the Owen. Thing. It's the Owen the Wilson haunting, haunting, right? Yes, not the old one, the the newish haunting. Right, the new, the newish one. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Liam in Neeson. German, yeah. In German, it's called Das Bukende. Oh well. Mm. Oh, good. You and sounded... else somebody doesn't have to trans- translate you into yeah. uh, German. <laughs> Thank goodness. Save them the trouble. Bye now. All right, Randy is now gone from the building. There are no Randys in the building. <laughs> right, only Randys in the Only building. Randys in the building. Wait, that doesn't work. Then there'd be yeah, only no, Randys. No, Ra- there'd be no Randys in the building. No yeah, Randys, yeah, no, no Lieutenant Yar. All right, I had on. you down as, uh, well, never mind. You might use it next next week for your recommendal, so never mind. Oh, right. did you have me I down, you down as something, something else? else. Was yes. it, um, shit, give me some initials. I don't remember what S-H. I said. S-H. S-H. <laughs> Another documentary. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that is, ne- well, I mean, I could do it next. Now I don't remember what it was. Hold on. <laughs> You're all typing in our chat. Not like it matters, but. Uh, did I put this in last week before I canceled Wednesday last week? I think week? you did. Yeah, I think you did. Um, or or I'm confused. Um, oh, yep. SH. Yep, okay. You're right. That will be next yep. week. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Also I'll a good say. one. Also one that really pissed me off. Yeah, I'll bet. Okay. Oh, that one pissed me off. We'll talk about that next week. All right. Uh, a couple quick things. No, nothing really. We're done. <laughs> we got nothing. I'm on DTNS later. I got yeah. Play Retro this afternoon, 4 p.m. Be there for that, me and Dunaway. Uh, I can't even remember what we're talking about. Oh, Phantasmagoria, the the, the weird point-and-click adventure oh, games back yeah. in the day. Still not sure if that's what – if the magazine – if the game's named after the magazine Phantasmagoria, 
or if I don't know uh, my memory. No, is weird. the magazine's called Fangoria, so probably. Oh, not. that's why. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> what am I Actually, thinking of? There's there's the movie Phantasm, and then the movie, or then the magazine Fangoria, and it's not named after the combination of those two. I think I that's that's what I I've bet done. You though. Conflated the two, yeah. That's what I've done. Well, anyway, we're going to talk about those. We're doing a little little Halloweening uh, oh. today on. Play oh, Retro. I like that. Yeah, good. So check it out tonight, uh, three thirty. Or sorry, four p.m. Mountain. Uh, here at frogpants.tv if you want to watch it live and get the podcast after it's going to do it for us big thanks to all our patreon people you guys are awesome uh there was some weird email glitch with patron stuff yesterday but i'm told that was part of the redesign and you should be back to normal now so if anyone has any trouble getting our notifications just let me know and uh, I'll, I'll poke those guys and see what's up but they just did a major revamp of patreon and i think some of that got horked in the process just a bug yes Anyway, uh, join us today, patreon.com slash TMS, when you get a chance. Brian, that'll do it for us. Do you have music? I do, I do. I had to pull it up here. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is going out to, <laughs> I love it, Cappy, who says, uh, I know we're a little bit late on this one, almost a week, man, sorry. Um, October 5th will be my 40th birthday. It's been a rough year for me, but y'all's shenanigans keep me laughing. 40th. Happy birthday. You get the old lady when it's 40. Yeah, you do. Lucky you. Um, all right. Specifically asked for any cover of a rap or a hip hop song in the style of a sea shanty. My gosh, uh, <laughs> the challenges that you put out, uh, throw, throw at me are just crazy. I don't know how I'm ever able to figure any of these things out, but uh, yeah, I've got one. Sure. Um, this was uh, done by uh, Jim Labap from his album, millennial Sh- shanties and madrigals. Wow. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a sea shanty version of the Milkshake Song by Kellis. Here is Milkshake Shanty. Get more at frogpants.com. Air shows and beer. Yeah. I like yeah. an air show. And, well, I don't like beer.